In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Matthew 22:21. Very well. Pay Caesar what belongs to Caesar and God what belongs to God. Good evening, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful week. Thank you for always inviting us in your feast. Thank you for preparing everything for us. All we need to do is to dine with you. We ask you tonight to open our hearts and minds for you. Help us to be willing to distinguish what's yours and what's not, so that in return we may give back what is due to you. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Good evening once again. I'm Ating. Welcome to the School of the Word. Tomorrow Sunday is our 29th Sunday in the Ordinary Time. Our readings are the following. First reading is from Isaiah 45, 4-6. Isaiah 45, 4-6. Responsorial Psalm, Psalm 96, 1, 3-5, 7-10. Psalm 96, 1, 3-5, and 7-10. Our second reading is from 1 Thessalonians 1, 1-5b. 1 Thessalonians 1, 1-5b. And our gospel is from Matthew 22:15 to 21. Matthew 22:15 to 21. Before we'll talk about the Sunday's gospel, we let's recall what was the gospel last week. It was taken from Matthew 22:1 to 14, the wedding feast. I was struck in the passage. Matthew 22:4. I have prepared a banquet slaughtered by fattened cubs and other animals, and now everything is ready. Come then to the wedding feast. The Lord prepared a special banquet. I could say it's special because He slaughtered His fattened animals. 
I believe it's very festive with beautiful decorations. I was imagining the wedding of Dr. Bello and Heidi. I bet it's more festive than, than that. Not only he prepared, he also asked his servants to go out and invite people. So it's not exclusive. It's inclusive. It's for everybody. Everybody is invited. I could imagine the excitement of the Lord waiting for his people to come and dine with him. But it's so sad to know they paid no attention. They continued with their businesses as if they heard and saw nothing. Worse, they even killed his servant. It made him dismayed. It made him angry that he still continued to send his sent forth his servant to invite people to his banquet. His servants were the prophets. And now these are the priests, everyone that serves in the church. The prophets and everybody that served in the church sacrificed their lives in order for us to be in his banquet. He even knew sent us his son Jesus for us. But it is so sad to know that many of us did not even bother to listen. It's been seven months since March when the pandemic made a great effect in our world. We have this term, the new normal. Everything has to be done online. There's no face-to-face. Everything has to be in in a way where we cannot be attached to one another. No? Everything was really new. A lot happened. No? Versus when gatherings were prohibited and even going to masses. I remember a few months when masses were still prohibited. I went to Nazareth church. The doors of the church were open. I know his banquet was prepared, even if nobody came. I know he's asking me to come in and just say, Hi, Lord. You know what? I stayed outside. I stayed outside because I noticed that the church was empty. Nobody was in there. Another thing also is that my fear for the virus. It's so overwhelming that I forgot that God is in there and He is more powerful than the virus. I I paid more attention to the virus. I paid no attention to his invitation to join his banquet. In Matthew 22:14, it says, Many are called, but few were chosen. Only those people who wore their wedding garments can enter and join the feast. The wedding garments of faith, of love, and hope. And I know at that very moment, I did not wear it. That's why I chose to go home. I chose to stay outside. I chose to to be eaten by my fear. I chose to to be outside and not to join his banquet. Our faith had been tested because of this pandemic. We are all filled with great fear because our enemy is invisible. But the Lord would like to remind us in our first reading in Isaiah 45, 5 to 6. I am Yahweh, and there's no other. There's no other God except me. Though you do know, do not know me, I have armed you so that you may be known from east to west that there is no one except me. I am Yahweh, and there is no other. I have armed you. I have given you faith, love, hope. I have given you Jesus. What do you ask for? What are you looking for? Right at this very moment, I am suffering because of my sickness. And actually, I am really losing hope. Just last last week, I went to the doctor and he talks about many things. Somehow I'm, I'm losing my hope. You know? The pain is as if more powerful than anything else. But he- hearing the Lord telling me that there is hope, 
that I am loved it made my heart overwhelmed with joy. Honestly, I am filled with fear because my doctor told me that I am very susceptible to any diseases. But my God is more powerful than my sickness. He is more powerful than COVID. He is more powerful than what we thought of. He is more powerful than the challenges in our lives. He is more powerful than our apprehensions, our fears. He has armed us. He has armed us. And let's not be paralyzed by our fears. The Lord wants us to believe, to have faith, to hope. Our gospel for tomorrow, tomorrow is very soothing. In Matthew 22, 15, 21, 21, the Pharisees wanted to trap Jesus. That's why they asked him, Is it permissible to pay taxes to Caesar or not? Jesus knew their intentions. He saw their hearts. That's why he was careful in dealing with them. In Matthew 22, 19-21, Jesus said, Show me the money you pay tax with. Whose portrait is this? Whose title? The Pharisees replied, Caesar's. Jesus then said to them, Very well. Pay Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and God what belongs to God. Jesus wanted to emphasize that give to Caesar what belongs to him, and God what belongs to God. In Romans 13, 1-2, it says, Let everyone be subjected to the authorities, for there is no authority that does not come from God, and the offices have, have been established by God. Whoever therefore resists authority goes against a decree of God, and whose those resist deserve to be condemned. Our gospel wanted to tell us two things. Give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. Caesar represents the authorities, our government. The Lord wants us to subject ourselves to it. its order to its loss. Take for instance this pandemic. Our LGU, the national government, keeps on reminding us about the following. Wear face masks, wear face shield, wash our hands regularly, avoid crowded places, stay at home if possible. These are health protocols necessary to be followed. Who will benefit from this? Is it the government? Actually, it's for us. For our families. We are all aware that the cases is growing every day. The government is asking us to help in the prevention of the transmission. Many doctors, health workers, frontliners sacrificed for us. They died for us to be saved. They sacrifice themselves and their families for us to be alive until now. Let us be grateful for them. Let's value their sacrifices by obeying the health protocols that the government wants us to do. Second thing, give God what belongs to God. When we obey the health protocols of this government, we are actually giving back what belongs to God. When we wear a face mask and face shield, when we do away from crowded places, when we stay at home, we are actually helping the government. We are preventing the transmission of the virus. We are loving ourselves. We are loving our families. We are loving our neighbors, the people we are in contact with every day. Obeying the protocols, means we value the sacrifices of the frontliners. We give them hope. We inspire them. We give them the reason to fight more for us. When we pray for the world, we pray for the sick, we pray for everyone. When we cling on to our faith, we are actually giving God what belongs to Him. Preparing these guidelines helped me a lot. 
the Lord made me realize how loved I am. Honestly, I felt unloved for the past months. A lot happened in my family. I was sick. Papa died. My brother died just recently. And my sickness worsened. I had to go to the clinic every month and it's not easy. With all the protocols, with all the triaging, with all the things that you see, with all the things that you hear. It's not easy to go out because of COVID and I am very susceptible. When I prepared these guidelines, I realized that I am still alive. I am still alive now. That I can still smile, that I can, that I am joyful despite of it all. That I have passed through all, all the troubles that I thought I could not. I realized I was wrong. I was wrong when I said that I am unloved. Because I am loved. I have hope. I still have faith. The Lord is inviting me to go on with the fight. He's asking me, He's asking you to wear our wedding garments, to wear our garments of faith, our garments of love, of hope, every day. Let's pray with the Word. Join in His banquet. Attend to Masses. But always remember to follow the protocol. I, I know you, I, I may not be around lately. One thing that keeps me from believing in God is that I still go to church. And in our church, I see Him in the face of our priest. He always inspires me. Every time He gives His homily, I see Him, I see Jesus in Him. And somehow it gives me to go on with life. The Lord is inviting us to have faith in the government. In Romans 13, 2, He says, Whoever therefore receives authority goes against a decree of God, and those who receive deserve to be condemned. Because resisting the government means resisting, the, resisting God. In Romans 13, 1, let everyone be subject to the authorities, for there is no authority that does not come from God. Again, Jesus said, Pay Caesar what belongs to Caesar, what belongs to him, and God what belongs to God.
Receive the sacrifice of a broken. 